The goal of this video introduction to Chapter 16 and 17 is to provide an introduction to cell signaling. In this video, we're going to be discussing the five types of cell signaling, autocrine, juxtacrine, paracrine, synaptic, and endocrine. By the end of this video, you should be able to name and define these types of cell signaling, as well as recognize examples of each type. So first, what is cell signaling? In short, cell signaling is the way that cells talk to one another, and these processes occur in all kinds of organisms, and they're highly conserved throughout evolution. So here on the left, you see um, budding yeast, and these budding yeast are forming projections called schmoo projections, named after a cartoon character, and these budding yeast are actually mating. So these haploid budding yeast are signaling to one another, so that they can mate and form diploid budding yeast. Here you see another signaling process. So this is an example of phototropism. So phototropism is where plants grow towards a light source, and this is controlled by a signal called auxin. So auxin drives this phototropism process. Here you can see someone testing their blood sugar. So as you know, diabetes is um, a disease that's caused by improper insulin signaling. So this is an example of a type of signaling that, that occurs in humans where insulin regulates glucose metabolism. So there are many different types of cell signaling processes, and almost every um, part of the cellular life cycle is regulated by cell signaling. So there are five major types of cell signaling. So endocrine cell signaling you may be familiar with. And endocrine signaling, this is basically long distance cell signaling where a cell sends a signal that travels through the bloodstream to reach a cell in a distant place in the body. Paracrine cell signaling is one step lower. This is where a cell signals to cells that are in its local neighborhood. And synaptic cell signaling is a, um, it's a subtype in some books of paracrine signaling. Basically, this is paracrine signaling that occurs across a synapse between neurons. But in both of these cases, the signal diffuses across a distance to reach a cell that's nearby. The next level of signaling is juxtacrine. In this case, this is signaling between two cells that are in direct contact. So the signal does not diffuse at all. The signal is actually attached to one cell, and the receptor is attached to another cell. So in this case, these two cells are actually in direct contact. And autocrine signaling is when a cell signals to itself. So let's talk about a little bit more about each of those types of signaling. So here you can see a great cartoon that kind of describes autocrine signaling. Of course I talk to myself. Sometimes I need expert advice. And sometimes cells actually talk to themselves. And this is very important for cell survival. So cells frequently send themselves signals to promote cell survival. And this can go awry in diseases like cancer, where a cancer cell will actually send signals to itself not only to survive, but to grow grow and divide, which can lead to tumor formation. Juxtacrine signaling, in which cells signal to the cell that's directly adjacent to that cell. There are a couple of types of juxtacrine signaling, a couple of examples. So one type of juxtacrine um, signaling is signaling between gap junctions. These are junctions that allow the cytoplasm to be in direct contact between two adjacent cells, and signals can diffuse through these junctions so that the cells can signal to one another. A very similar um, situation occurs in plants. In plants, we have junctions called plasmo desmata, and in this case, the cytoplasm and small molecules can actually pass directly from cell to cell through these gaps in the cell wall, and once again, this allows cells that are adjacent to one another to signal. 
However, this doesn't have to occur through a junction. In addition, cells can also recognize one another through juxtacorne signaling. So here you see a signal that's attached to the outside of the cell is recognized by a receptor on an adjacent cell, and the cells are actually in physical contact. So this is an example of juxtacorne signaling, and this type of signaling is very, very common in the immune system, particularly in cells that are signaling the immune system that they need to be destroyed. So in paracrine and synaptic signaling, the signal diffuses to surrounding cells. So here you can see a cell that's secreting a signal. And then this cell, this signal can then diffuse to other cells that are s sort of in the neighborhood. So you can think of this as signaling not to next door neighbors, but to cells that are in the neighborhood. Frequently, this type of signaling creates a gradient of the signal in which the cells that are the closest receive more of the signal and cells that are farther away receive less of the signal. And this can be very important for development. So cells may develop based on how much of the signal that they receive. So synaptic signaling is actually very closely related because here also the signal is a diffusible signal. However, in this case, the signal is actually a neurotransmitter, and the neurotransmitter diffuses across a very short synapse between two cells, and then it stimulates the target cell. So this could be a neurotransmitter diffusing to another neuron, or this could be a neuromuscular junction in which a neuron was signaling to um, a muscle cell. And finally, the last type of signaling is endocrine signaling. In this case, the signal travels a very long distance. So here you see an endocrine cell is producing a signal. That signal then travels through the bloodstream to a target cell that's very far away in the body. And in this case, um, then the, tar the target cell will respond in an appropriate manner. Frequently, this is also referred to as hormonal signaling because hormones um, are, are travel through the endocrine pathway and signal in an endocrine manner. And that's the end of this video.